God. Um, I give thanks to all of you. Um, Pastor Eric um, came down with COVID again, um, and I'm Judy Johnson, and um, so I welcome you to this time of worship. We have some announcements. Hi, all. I'm Ryan Bartoldis. I'm the organist and music director here, and uh, we have a very special presentation. That's my daughter saying hi. Um, that uh, we have a very special presentation during worship next week. Um, the festival choir has been working hard on William Averett's Over Jordan, a suite of four old American hymns for a uh, forehand piano and chorus. Uh, it's lovely. It's a little bit of kind of different from what we normally do. And uh, we, we're looking very forward to sharing it with you. So uh, if you have someone you'd like to introduce the church to who, you know, likes music and the like, uh, this might be a good chance to kind of share something with them. So we, uh, we are having rehearsal for festival choir uh, folks after worship today, um, and I'm really tired, so it's not going to last as long as you might think it will, and I will see you then. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm the director of youth ministry. Um, thank you to all who have already donated for our Thanksgiving baskets ministry next week. Um, there is a, um, a bin out in the uh, Heritage Hall today, and there will be even more next week. So all, um, all donations for our 10 baskets that we are going to be assembling, um, can if you haven't brought them yet, you can bring them next week. Um, and youth, we will be meeting tonight at 530 and next week after worship. Um, and see you there. Good morning. Uh, John Elliott with the Christian Education Committee. And I'm just here to say if any of you are interested in working with youth and or children, we are going to be having a safe sanctuary class next Sunday at 930. Also, while I'm here, just a brief blurb about um, the Advent wreath making, which we're planning to do on the 3rd of December. More to follow. and lots of things in our uh, worship guide, so please peruse those and, and, um, and come. Um, you are welcome to any and all events. Let us worship God. <laughs> Together, we choose to serve God, which means we choose love, we choose hope, we choose, we choose kindness, we choose love, we choose justice, we choose to serve God. 
Let us pray. Ever-living God, before the earth was formed and even after it shall cease to be, you are God. Break into our short span of life and show us those things that are eternal, that we may serve your purpose in all we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin, that we might find forgiveness and new life in Christ. Everlasting God,
Sisters and brothers, rejoice and be glad. For God is mighty to save and comes to us in peace to forgive, to restore, and to strengthen us eternally in Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. invite the children to come forward and the rest of you may be seated. Good morning. Do you know what it means to worry? Do you ever worry about anything? What, what's it mean to worry? It's to wonder if something bad is going to happen, maybe? Or maybe it's because we haven't studied and we've got a test at school. Or maybe it's because we're not sure who our friends are or if somebody will like us. So there's lots of things to worry about. And Jesus liked to teach people about how to live, and he didn't want us to worry. So Jesus loved to teach people about how God wants people to live. God takes care of us, Jesus said. Don't worry about what you are going to eat or what you might wear or when you'll grow taller. God will take care of those things for you. Look at the birds. Do they worry about what they eat? Of course not. God makes sure they have food. Look at the flowers. Do they worry about what color they are? Of course not. God made them each beautiful in their own way. And God makes each of you beautiful in your own way. And God loves you as you are. You're beautiful simply because you are you. Then Jesus said, listen, there is more to life than worrying. Worry gets you nowhere, so stop. The one thing you need to do is put God first. Trust that God will take care of you. Sometimes when we worry, we're not sure, but when we can take a deep breath and say, okay, God, I know you're going to take care of me, then that will help us get through whatever's going on. Let's pray. Dear God, we are grateful that you created us and that you take care of us and that you love us as we are. Help us not to worry. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, to whom should we go? You have the words of eternal life. 
by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us of your promises, that we might hear your truth and enjoy you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. And then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in, in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Morites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The people, then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land, and therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The, Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading is from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings should be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself, human, and gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For me, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles, in faith and truth. The word of the Lord.
Our gospel reading for this morning comes from Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father, who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye of the lamp of the bot is the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? 
And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will I eat or what will I drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of the Lord. When Eric called to ask if I could preach today because he had um, tested positive for COVID, he said I could change the scriptures if I wanted. You see, he had picked these scriptures and hymns before he left, and I knew he was looking forward to sharing what he heard God saying to him and thus to you through today's scriptures. So even though they were long, I decided to see what message God had there for me and to share that with you. Every week before the first scripture is read, the liturgist prays asking that God will open our ears and our hearts to the message that God has for us this day. When you come to worship, I hope one of the questions that you ask is what will be What will God be saying to me today? So I prayed Friday night, and then I read the scriptures and looked at what was happening during worship. In a few moments, we will be receiving two really cool people as new members, receiving your commitment forms for a financial commitment, and we will be receiving an invitation to dine with Jesus. What what stood out to me was the ideas of choices, commitments, and how we are to live in the kingdom of God. Choose this day who you will serve, Joshua says to the assembled people. He doesn't ask once, he asks twice to be sure. And twice they say, we will serve the Lord. And they meant it. But, you know, we understand that life gets busy, hardships happen, and eventually a sense of commitment, well, we forget it, or the sense of commitment wanes. It is good to be reminded sometimes of our commitments. Jesus reinforces the idea of choice when he says no one can serve two masters. And when you have chosen who you will serve, There are certain practices or ways of living that will guide how you live and serve. Joshua, Jesus, and Paul give instructions. Throw away your idols. Pray for everyone. Give thanks. Give alms. Fast. Don't let possessions become more important than God. Trust God. In a few moments... Monsi and Fidelis will formally become members of the church. They have made a choice to be a part of this community of faith in this part of God's kingdom. Many of you have made that commitment either through becoming a member or simply by participating faithfully in the church and worship. You have said yes to God. 
You have said yes to living in God's neighborhood. You are serving and making a difference in large and small ways, each unique to you, inside and outside of the church. You have said yes to following Jesus. And it is good to intentionally renew that commitment. In a few moments, you also will be saying yes to God and to your commitment to God's church when you offer a financial commitment. I know the finance committee says thank you, but if you think about it, you are grateful for the commitment of the person beside you or across the aisle or attending worship online. We are the church together. And when we gather to worship and serve, we are, we are saying yes to God. We are saying yes to following Jesus. And it is good to renew our commitment. And when we come to the table and reach out to take bread and juice, we are saying yes. We are choosing to affirm our commitment of saying yes and following Jesus. Communion always reminds me that God, through Christ, has already chosen me and has already chosen you. You are God's beloved. Christ died for you and for me. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. It is good to reach out and take and remember that the God who acted at Jesus' birth and re resurrection is still acting today. It is good to remember God's commitment to us and to renew our commitment to God and to Jesus, to being disciples and being part of God's wonderful world. Amen.
On behalf of the session, I present Motsi and Fidelis Bingwani, who have been received into membership of this congregation by transfer of another congregation. In baptism, we were claimed by God, marked as Christ's own forever, and joined to his body by the Holy Spirit. You come to us then, not as strangers, but as friends in Christ and members of his household of God. We rejoice, we really do rejoice, that you now desire to join with this congregation in the worship and mission of the church. Hear these words from scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. <clears throat> As members of the body of Christ, let us all reaffirm the faith into which we were baptized as we proclaim the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 35 in the front of your hymnals. You may stand if you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son, our Lord, who was and Fidelis, together we have professed our faith as one body and now ask you these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you once again, and you all once again, um, turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, I do. Do you affirm Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, I do. I do. Will you continue to be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying the word and showing his love? If so, I will. I will. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, sharing in his worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, I will. I will. And you already have. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for calling us to be your people and joining us to Christ's body, the church. We praise you for leading Monsi and Fidelis to this congregation. Empower us by your spirit that we might love one another as Christ loved us, honoring him in all that we say and do, giving our lives in service to others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We rejoice this day as you become one of us in the life and ministry of this congregation. Let us welcome them in worship and mission of the church. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you to share with us in the ministry of Christ, for we were all one in him. Let us share with each other and with them signs of peace and reconciliation. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Amen.
Good morning. There we go. Uh, so for those, those of you who don't know me, I am Taylor Rayborn, and I am the uh, head of the stewardship committee here, I guess the chair, my formal title. Uh, and this is an exciting day. It's, it's a beautiful Sunday. It's so good to see so many of you here. And uh, it's a day that we're going to be making commitments uh, to the financial uh, lifeblood of our church, the well-being of our church. And um, I, I'm just going to list off some some things when I was sitting here this morning, all of the things that uh, that our contributions uh, support. So missions, Christian education, uh, we have children's, youth ministries, uh, music, building, of course our pastor, uh, support staff, deacons, just a remarkable array of things that are supported by our financial contributions. Uh, and so today we have the opportunity to make a commitment for the coming year. And this allows the Finance Committee to make uh, judgments about how to, to uh, plan our, the, our commitments for the year. Um, and so this is something that is, is, is actually a really exciting thing for me to see, uh, to, to see all of us in the church make these commitments. And so who of you have, have uh, received this a sheet of paper in the mail. I hope most of you, hope all of you. Uh, and so even if you, you, for example, may have misplaced it, for example, hypothetically, under, <laughs> under some children's toys, uh, you can still find them there in the back, uh, or you can print them out online. Uh, and all is not lost if you're unable to make your commitment this week. You can, of course, do it in the weeks to come. Um, and so... Uh, as the offering plate goes comes around, I encourage you, if you have your hastily printed out, in our case, uh, <laughs> uh, commitment form, just put it in the plates. Uh, and before we close and, and just and we have the offering plates come around, I just want to uh, say something to to sort of close a poem that really reflects uh, what I what this church means to us. So, just to back up. So in October, you heard from three speakers, four speakers. You heard three consecutive weeks. You heard from uh, you, ha you heard from Rebecca Lehman, um, who talked about her experience with the church over you know a period of decades, and then you you heard from newer members, uh, Ben and Erica Seibert, who had come after COVID and is one of the many new members. As, as that we're, we've welcomed since uh, this disruption of COVID. And you also heard from um, me, and who represents people who wandered in during the middle of COVID off the street. And so, <laughs> and so um, that, that was intended to sort of give you a, an impression of sort of the fact that right now we have, we're a mixture of old and new members and the church is really thriving. And I'm grateful for for those who, who, um, who spoke, but also I'm, I'm really grateful for all of you for your support of this church. And so uh, I think of this place as, it's, just so, it's a wonderful place to celebrate and worship every Sunday, but also during the week, all the things that we do with our hands and our hearts. And, um, you know, but when I was doing some praying earlier, I, I was thinking and reflecting, this is also, uh, you know, as a hospital. Uh, in some ways, it's a way that we we are hurting and we we heal ourselves. We heal. Christ heals us through the prayers that we have and the things that we lift up to God on Sunday or on Wednesday or even during the week. And it's also kind of fitting that that it's of that metaphor because I'm kind of a history buff. And in in the in, during the Civil War, this was actually literally a field hospital. <laughs> So I think of that metaphor, and so I'll close by just, uh, you know, again inviting you to put your uh, your financial commitments in the plates as you go it goes around, and also to think about the fact that over 200 years we've spread the gospel from this site, from this beautiful sanctuary, from this church in the middle of this beautiful city, and in that every generation sort of passes the baton to the next generation, and so. One of my favorite poems, and it's probably because I grew up in Canada, uh, and it was recited yesterday in Flanders Field. And so I'll just close by saying, uh, to you, from flailing hands, we 
pass the torch for you to hold it high. And that's what we're doing this Sunday. Thank you very much. Scripture says, freely we have received, freely we give, with gratitude and joy. May our offerings reflect our hopes and our fears. May we choose abundance over scarcity, and may the story we tell of our lives reflect the grace and mercy of God's provision all along the way. With gladness, let us present the tithes and offerings and of our life and labor to the Lord. dedication. Gracious God, creator of the world, give of, giver of all that is good. These pledges represent our work, our hopes, and our dreams. May they be the first fruits of all we have, May we see these pledges as a sacred offering. And not May our gifts be used wisely for your service. May they move us to be more faithful disciples. In gratitude for the grace of God and in the spirit of the generosity embodied by Christ, we dedicate these commitments to the work and ministry of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated.
Jesus often started his parables by saying, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. All of Jesus' stories pointed to God's coming kingdom, where justice would roll down like waters, and righteousness will be the um, like an ever-flowing stream. Here at this table, here at this table, we get a glimpse of God's kingdom that will last forever. Here at this table, we are invited to a feast, not of our own making, a place where there is room for all, a feast where we are nourished and given new life. So come to the table. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Friends, you do not need to be a member of this church. You may come, and Christ invites you to come. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessing, honor, and glory are yours, O God, eternal source of all creation. You are mightier than the thunder of the waters, mightier than the waves of the sea. You are majesty, and we give you praise and glory. Yet, when the time was right, you sent your son, an infant of low estate, to testify to the truth of power made known in your embracing mysterious love. Jesus came to raise up the poor and cast down the mighty. He taught us, like no other, that your kingdom is one of forgiveness, where human needs are met daily and we are set free for love. And so we lift our hearts in joyful praise, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all those who have gone on before and forever sing to the glory of your name. for sending your only Son to live among us, sharing our joys and sorrow. He told your story, healed the sick, and was the friend of sinners. On the night before he died for us, Jesus gathered his friends for a meal. He took bread, gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering all that Jesus has done for us, his life, death, and resurrection, we offer you our praise and thanks as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Send your Holy Spirit upon our celebration and us, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life-giving Spirit. Unite us in Christ and one to another from every tribe, people, language, and nation to reveal your peace, justice, and love in the world. And crown us with your holy wisdom that we may never lose sight of your kingdom now and in the world to come. Remember your church. Help us to tell of your coming peace. Remember the sick, the dying, those who grieve, those who are hurt in any way. We pray for peace in the world. 
We pray for those things that only we know in our hearts and may be reluctant to say and share out loud. Bring your kingdom to this world and help us to do what we can to bring your kingdom here and now. All this we ask through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Because there is one loaf, we, many as we are, are one body. For it is one loaf to which we partake. When we break this bread, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? And when we give thanks over the cup, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? The table is ready. You are welcome. Come dine with Christ.
body and blood of Christ, God's love for you. Take, eat, and remember. Let us pray. God of grace, you invite us to your table and welcome us as part of your family. You feed us with your body and satisfy our deepest hunger. We thank you for these gifts. Now send us out into the world by the power of your spirit that we may be witnesses sharing the life-giving news of the gospel. Amen. with hope and abounding in love and the blessing of God Father Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always Amen. equip now for the work of ministry go in peace and be bread for the life of the world Amen, Amen. Thanks. thanks be to God, God.